Hi, I'm Maria, and this is NASA Now. The Mars rover Curiosity is well on its way to the fourth planet from the Sun. When NASA's most advanced rover lands on Mars, it will be able to go farther, faster, and do more science than any of its predecessors. We'll talk with an expert who worked on the Mars rover and learn more about the special instruments on Curiosity. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Laser, cameras, and a coin? That's just some of the items NASA's Mars rover is carrying along with a highly specialized camera called MOLLE or the Mars Hand Lens Imager. The camera is designed to look at the finest details of Martian rocks and soil that Curiosity collects. To make sure the camera is accurately adjusted, scientists will be using a specialized calibration target mounted on the end of the rover's robotic arm. The target is about the size of a smartphone. At first glance, the target looks like an eye chart with very fine lines, color chips, and a real penny. The penny is from 1909, the first year Lincoln pennies were minted in the centennial of Abraham Lincoln's birth. Including it on the calibration target is a nod to the geologist's tradition of placing a coin as a size reference in close-up photographs of rocks. Whoever thought a penny could go so far? NASA's Curiosity rover is carrying a lot of high-tech instruments that will allow scientists to learn more about the mysterious red planet known as Mars. Today we have an expert who knows a ton about Curiosity and why robotic exploration is critical to landing humans on Mars. Paulo Younts is a robotics engineer at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. He is working on the next generation of robotic explorers. Curiosity is going to weigh about 2,000 pounds and it's going to be about the size of a small car. And it's pretty much the largest, most technically advanced rover that we've ever sent to another planet. And it's going to be able to travel further than anything else we've ever sent. And also it has wheels about 20 inches in diameter that can actually drive over huge obstacles and rocks up to 30 inches tall. Curiosity is going to include a whole suite of instruments to help us analyze Mars, including some cameras, which are mounted on the very top of the rover that will allow us to take nice high definition color video images of Mars and its landscape, as well as a microscopic imager on the end of a seven foot long arm that will allow us to take nice small close up images of rocks and samples. Also, it's going to have a drill to be able to drill into rocks to gather samples of the rock material inside of the rocks itself and a suite of instruments to analyze those samples. For example, Kemen, which is going to shine x-rays at the rocks to be able to figure out the mineralogy of the rocks, the chemicals inside of it. And there's another instrument called SAM, which is we can heat up the samples and actually kind of boil out the gases and chemicals, analyze that, and look for organic materials like hydrogen, oxygen, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, which um, are a lot of the building blocks for life, which is kind of what we're looking for. It also has this instrument called ChemCam, which I can actually zap um, rocks from afar with a little laser and we can actually try and figure out what those rocks are made out of without having to even drive up to the rocks. And then it has um, a couple other instruments that are going to allow us to look for ice and water underneath the surface of Mars, um, as well as study the radiation and the weather on Mars. NASA's missions are based on inquiry, and so we use a scientific method for all our missions. We first come up with a question we're trying to answer, and then we come up with a hypothesis, and then we come up with a series of tests to test out the hypothesis. And then we analyze results and then draw a conclusion based on the results that we gain from our test. In our mission, Curiosity's question that we're trying to answer is, was um, Mars habitable? Could life has, have existed on Mars? And then the hypothesis is that uh, life could exist if it has various organic materials, and in order to test that hypothesis, we come up with a set of experiments, in this case, sending a rover to Mars with a series of instruments to look for those organic materials. 
And basically, uh, once we collect samples and are able to test out these different materials that we collected, we can analyze that data, determine if there's organic materials in the soil that could have made Mars habitable, and then draw conclusions saying, you know, Mars could have supported life either now or in the past. And we're actually already starting to think about the next mission that we want to send after Curiosity. So the proposed mission that we want to send is actually to send another rover about the size of Curiosity to Mars in possibly 2018. Um, to not just drive around Mars, analyze the rocks and take pictures, but also to collect samples, store them in a container that we can actually bring back to Earth in the future and distribute them um, to science institutions around the world to also help us try and investigate more of Mars. Our expert has shown that robots play a critical role in space exploration today and in the future. Here's a great way that you can get started on a career that might lead to NASA. There's no better way to learn about robots and programming than hands-on experience. Look for the link for the first robotics competition located on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.